question was asked of me uh, by a lot of people actually um, to do this video. They wanted to know what is the difference between the Anunnaki and the Natiru. Um, let me first lay a little foundation for those people that probably don't know anything about neither one of these groups or either one of these groups. The Anunnaki is basically a group of beings that were given this title of Anunnaki and the title means those who from the heavens came to earth so the term Anunnaki means those from the heavens who came to earth or who were sent from the heavens or the heavenly order to the earth this is the Anunnaki mostly the Anunnaki consists of Syrians beings from Sirius this is when you talk about Anunnaki where most of them come from. Now, some Anunnaki, when you talk about Anunnaki, you could be speaking of Pleiadians as well. You could be speaking of Pleiadians when you talk about Anunnaki. But it simply means any being that was sent from the heavenly order from the order of the heavens to earth is considered an Anunnaki. And these were beings that were responsible for creating and fashioning man in their image and after their likeness because you have different types of Anunnaki but you have a particular class of Anunnaki that are that look like humans, that act like humans, that do things like humans, that have emotions like humans, that fight, that do things, that war with each other. When you read the Gilgamesh epics, you read about the gods, you notice they have attributes like humans. The gods fight like humans, they do things like humans because humans got all of their attributes and qualities from the gods and the gods are basically just humans that are basically further advanced or millions of years ahead of humans that's all most extraterrestrials are and people have to really understand this they're just beings that are further ahead than humans that's all they are you're a lot of times you're looking at you and looking at some ETs you're looking at you in the future a lot of times especially those people out there that have that are working with particular ETs and channeling ETs, if you're channeling ETs, a lot of times you're going to be channeling yourself. You're sending a message back to yourself because you had that technology in the future. And this is why you are getting contacted by aliens that other people aren't. Because you have a future incarnation in a civilization that is alien-like according to our civilization. So that's just another way of looking at the whole alien thing or whatever before I even get into the rest of this video. Is you're looking at yourself in the future. So when you talk about the Anunnaki, you're talking about beings that came down. Now, a lot of people would like to say that the Natiru are beings that came down too, and the Natiru are equal to the Anunnaki. And that basically the Natiru are just the Egyptian version or the Tamaran version of the Sumerian Anunnaki. It's not true. It's not true. Um, this comes from having, having a lack of history behind the words. Again, well, I've explained to you the history behind Anunnaki. Now let me explain to you the history behind the Tertu, from my research of course. I'm not saying I have all the answers, just a perspective based on what I've studied and this is probably helping someone out along the way. And if it's not and you already know this information, just watch it and be entertained. You might learn something still. Um, the Tertu are a group of, originally they were nature spirits. The Tertu were originally spirits, energies actually even, dealing with forces of nature. The Tertu and the power of the Natiru is more powerful here on this planet than the power of working with Anunnaki for humans. Now, the Anunnaki is intelligent. Not saying that, but by far, I would rather work with the Natiru and the nature spirits for many reasons than I would rather work with beings from the future. Mainly because of the deception part. Mainly because of the deception part. And they still have political agendas in the future. You'll find that out once you start working with them. They still have a political agendas in the future. So I would rather work with forces that are indigenous to this planet and that are in the best interest of seeing this planet grow and be becoming further. And as humans, we were basically made really the custodians of this planet and the vicegerents of this planet. So we are basically those particular beings that were sent to protect this planet. So I would rather form alliances with nature spirits, with animal spirits, with energies. These are beings. When you talk about the Natiru, you're talking about beings, animal spirits, higher beings than not not what I'm basically pointing out is they're not anthropomorphic. These these beings, they're higher beings. 
when you talk about the Nisiru. So that's the main difference or whatever is they're beings of energy that eventually became anthropomorphized when humans began to associate themselves with the Nisiru. See at one point the creators of the Egyptian mystery system. See let's talk about the creators. So you have people that are initiated into the Egyptian mystery system but those a lot of those people weren't the creators of it. The creators of the Egyptian mystery system dealt with the animal spirits, dealt with the nature spirits, dealt with energy, you see, and they put and used animals as the first Nitiru. You see, Heru was the falcon before he was turned into an anthropomorphic version. Tahuti, you see, he was the bird, like the ibis bird, before he was turned into a man, anthropomorphized, you see. The Tyrette was the hippopotamus. You see, that's dealing with the hippopotamus, the Tyrette. So, I mean, you got different beings that represent different things. Ra being, re being represented by the lion. You see, and a lot of the um, material were also associated with elements, the elementals, like air, earth, water, fire, and ether. You see, so you have the material that were associated with elements as well as animals. And this is how the original ancients, when they worked in the material, see, they worked with them from the mindset of working with animals, working with elements, working with water, not working with a human. See, now people look at it like, I'm working with the ancestors, and they're thinking about a human, Tahuti. See, they don't realize that the Adunaki, when they came down, see, they put themselves in the seat of these gods or these ancestral forces and these energy forces. And this is how a lot of this anthropomorphic stuff came about, not even just in the Egyptian mystery system, but in a lot of the systems across the planet, a lot of the indigenous systems that use anthropomorphic spirits now uh, were basically deceived by the aliens. And the aliens put themselves, put themselves up there. That's why you see the cat heads and all of that. Those were ETs that came down. These were beings that exist, you see, and they put themselves inside of those different uh, systems, you see, and it's going. It's no different. It's no different. Any system that has an anthropomorphic version probably goes back to an animal version or element version or both. Either air, earth, water, fire, or a dragon, a bear, or some type of a a animal type of spirit that is indigenous to this planet, whether on the third or fourth dimension. Because you got to remember, some animals don't exist anymore here on the third dimension but they still exist on the fourth dimension like unicorns and dragons and I know people are like whoa you're saying this they don't exist I've never seen one you can't see damn it because you can only see a certain level of the UV spectrum you see that's what the, you, you're not a scientist you see you're dealing in emotion saying that you know what I'm saying that somebody's crazy because they said they've seen a dragon or a unicorn or something because you don't know what type of being they, they, that this particular person was especially if they're a child because these children that are coming back now, like your crystal children, which I did a video on, they can see into the fourth dimension. They can see dragons and unicorns. They can see energy. You see, they can see auras around people. So just because you can't see it because you are not that type of being or because you've calcified your penal gland, you've been here so long in so many incarnations, you forgot about your higher senses, don't try to put it off on the next person like they can't see it. You know what I'm saying? Because there, there are children out here that can see into the fourth dimension. And they can see the unicorns. And they can see the dragons you see and they can see the fairies and the leprechauns and all of this type of stuff and the reptilians and all of that you see so I know what I'm talking about because I get emails every day where people are seeing this stuff and people that don't know each other from one part of the world have the same visions of people that don't know each other from the other side of the globe so you can't tell me and I don't know what I'm talking about because of the fact that I listen to the people you see and the people send me emails every day talking about this stuff so it's not like I'm just sitting here making this stuff up you know what I'm saying people are having these experiences and this is and this is just based off of me being public because I had my own experiences before I ever went public talking about this information to prove for myself that I know that this stuff exists so I'm not here on YouTube to prove anything this is not a, a proof uh, pill or this is not a a proof product meaning that I'm not here to give you a product that proves something to you if you want proof then go find the proof research it you, you, if you want proof about what's going on here, then tap into the paranormal. Start to do rituals and ask the spirit realm to reveal itself to you. Then you'll get proof. Because you can't really get proof when it comes to spiritual information unless you ask for the validation from the spiritual world. That's how your proof comes. You have to ask the ancestors. You can't go read a book and say, oh, that's proof that the spiritual world works. Because the spiritual world can't be validated by the material world because it's older than it. 
The material world was birthed from the spiritual world. So you can't go to the material world to prove the spiritual world. You have to go to the spiritual world to prove the spiritual world. So you have to go to your ancestors. You have to go to those beings that you can't see and ask them to prove themselves to you. You see, if you want to believe in this stuff, you need proof for those people that need that proof. You see, but some people are past that. And they need to be walked in out of certain information and walked into certain information. So that's what I do my videos for, just simply to provide information. You can disagree with it, that's fine. It's simply to provide information. So I just want to throw that out there. So that's basically um, dealing with the animal spirits. I mean, like I said, you have the, um, the, the, uh, the tiru, which were the energy, as far as the elements, and the animals. And then they eventually became anthropomorphic over time, and the image has changed. Just like the image of Christ has changed so many times over the last 2,000 years. Just like the image of Muhammad has changed. Some people say he's black. Some people say he's white. Just like the image of all these different figures have changed so many times. Buddha, Krishna, all of them. The images have changed. Well, same thing that happened with them too. The images have changed. They used to be animals. So when you deal with them, you want to work with the animal uh, mostly. You can work with the material by just simply working with those particular nature spirits that they represent. You want to work with Heru, work with the falcon. You see, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. You want to work with Sekhmet, then work with the lioness. That's how you do it. So I hope this helps is to, um, to walk people into the information, to help them to separate the difference between the Naturu and the Anunnaki. Again, the Anunnaki are aliens basically that came down that were sent on a mission and that eventually put their images into the images of the Naturu and the Naturu and the nature spirits became them. You see, it became them. But before them, there were nature spirits. Before they came to this planet, there were nature spirits. Like I said, they put their images into it. The Homo erectus species was working with the nature spirits millions of years ago. Time never was where it wasn't beings that were intelligent on this planet. They are just different versions of different beings. Just like in the Matrix when the architect said that there were six different versions before Neo, there's been six different versions of humans before this version of us. So six or more. I'm just using that as you know a term to let you know that Basically, what you think about your history, um, the things that you think you know uh, based on what you learned in school, based on what you learned in some rap song, based on what you learned on TV, or even some the internet, might not be true. You need to start doing your research, and the best way to start is by researching the indigenous peoples. This is how I basically researched and learned a lot of information from researching the indigenous tribes. Instead of looking to what modern science had to say, I looked to what the indigenous tribes had to say. And I weighed that out and balanced that out with, with, with what modern science had to say. And this is how I came up with my conclusions, a lot of my opinions and my views. Now, um, as far as, I want to throw this in here too about astrology. The same thing is true of astrology. Astrology deals with the animal spirits. And I talked about this before. So even some of your anthropomorphic um, uh Picks now and glyphs now in astrology were once animals. Were once animals and they became anthropomorphic over time. So man eventually put, you know, man, whether it's man from the future or man in the now, puts his image on everything so that he can feel like he's superior. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's nothing wrong with that. And I want to point that out too. It's nothing wrong with the fact that the images became physical and anthropomorphic over time. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just pointing out the fact that that's what happened. Because some people think that the anthropomorphic version came first, and it didn't. That's what I'm pointing out. Not to say about wrong or right. Remember, I remain in the middle, and I remain balanced. I simply provide information. Uh, so I thank you for watching this video. And until we meet again, I'll leave you guys in peace and love.